The second seal is the red horse. The red horse is God the Son. S-O-N. Revelation chapter 6 verses 3 and forward. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse went out, a fiery red one, and its horseman was empowered to take peace from the earth so that people would slaughter one another. And a large sword was given to him. So here we have the poetic writing here again. The red horse is God the Son. He is represented by a star or planet. Um, his his red color, his fiery red color is why he's called the red horse, of course. And the fact that when he or the star planet is in the constellation of Aries, he is known as the god of war or he has a weapon given to him. His weapon is a sword. So that is the explanation for the poetic writing that we have for the red horse. But not only is the red horse represented as a star or planet being inside the constellation of Aries. He also has a weather pattern or destructive nature when over your area. If he so chooses, he can rain down fire and brimstone, as in Sodom and Gomorrah. He can start intense fires that burn millions of acres towns, um, villages, you know, he can, um, and you know, the way that you know that it's God is that he will often leave trees in the middle of this annihilation. I mean, you'll see everything else turn to a powdery gray white ash, and yet you will see trees intact right beside a car that was totally consumed and melted you know twisted metal and of course common sense tells us that that tree should also be burnt to nothing but there it is it stands that is God's signature just like when Moses went to the mountain and up the mountain and he found the the bush that was on fire yet it did not burn that's the same thing that we see in the after effects today if we pay attention go back if you have a chance and look at the one of the first fires it was called paradise the paradise fire I think in California years ago at the beginning of this apocalyptic time um, or towards the beginning you will see that there are actual trees uh, among the ash remains you know houses are totally burned to the foundation cars are twisted metal that's all that's left fireplaces are left you know bricks but there are also trees among some of these uh, remains. If you go back and, and really look at it, you will see what I'm talking about. So, the, the red horse uh, is the son of God. He is the fire. He is the fiery red dragon. He is 
fire. He comes in clouds. And you will notice that a lot of times when you see these fires, it's accompanied by a lot of clouds. And suddenly, everything's ablaze. And then, of course, we have the smoke from the fire itself. But before that, you may see a red sky. You may see uh, lots of clouds. And then suddenly, fire. And that fire burns with intense heat. All right. So that is the red horse. That's one of the destructive patterns that accompanies the red horse if he so chooses. Another thing, earthquakes. All earthquakes, if it's a true earthquake, is from the red horse. Um, drought. Severe drought is another one. Um, red skies like we see in this photo um, it can be an orangey red uh, or really intense red like this one also iron ore or uh, a powdery dusting of the area you may go out and you'll find like a reddish dust on your windshield that is the result of the red horse being over your area. Another one is volcanic eruptions with lava. If you have a volcanic eruption with just ash and no lava, that is a demonic angel who is being released from his rocky confinement which some of the very worst angels were put under rocks, sharp rocks, the Bible calls it. We know them as volcanoes. And when it is time for this particular uh, demonic angel to be released, he will come up as ash and smoke. And sometimes you can even see their faces that they display in the ash. So we have the red horse who is the son of God and is responsible for intense fire, drought, volcanic eruptions with lava, uh, red skies, uh, iron ore, uh, particulates falling down in the form of like a dusting and drought if I didn't say that if you notice here in this photo I just want to point out I, I chose this photo because it not only shows the red horse here okay the the red sky is the red horse okay he's in front of what we call Saturn here is in the middle and the red horse doesn't necessarily have to be in front of Saturn, okay? He can be anywhere. But in this particular photo, I thought it was very unique because it shows Saturn here in the middle. And here you can see Saturn's long rays. See here? Sometimes you'll see several rays off of Saturn, you know? Like 10 or 12. I'm not even, I don't know. I've never really counted them when it's a lot of them. But they're very short, and they only go out a short ways when it's like that. But a lot of times, you'll see Saturn, and you'll see these long rays, just two of them, usually, from either side. This is what we're seeing here. Also, we see Uranus. Uranus is the halo around Saturn. So Saturn and Uranus usually are always together, okay? Um, Uranus is very large, but here you see this halo that's a part of Uranus. This dark pale sky from here out is also Uranus. It's very large, and Saturn is like a uh, maybe a belly button or <laughs> where you put the air into a beach ball so imagine that the beach ball is Uranus but the 
the, the, the place where you put the air in is Saturn. That's how large we're talking about here. That's how large Uranus is. And Saturn, although very, very large itself, is dwarfed by the, the huge uh, sphere that, the, that um, Uranus is, or the pale horse is what we, what we would, what the Bible calls Uranus. We call Uranus, Uranus, you know, that's what we're taught, but it is incorrect, okay? We are watching or looking at, when we see what we call Uranus, we're looking at the pale horse, and the pale horse contains the very throne of God the Father. So here we see God the Father, we see Saturn, which is actually uh, the lake of fire within it, and you know that it's, it's the lake of fire, it's so hot, it burns bright, bright white, it is not Earth's sun, although we mistakenly call it Earth's sun. Earth's sun is very small, golden, and nurturing. The warmth from it is nurturing. It's not hot. When Saturn is above us, it's very hot. And it, it can revert streets into like sticky tar, melt playground equipment, trash cans, and traffic signs. That's when you know Saturn is above you. It's much, much larger than Earth's sun, okay? So, that's why I chose this picture. So we have the red horse that's in front of Saturn and the pale horse. Very interesting photo. So, I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this is a blessing to you. Until next time.